So being here on YouTube talking about watches and also on Instagram, I often come face to face with just watch brands every single day that I've never heard of. Most of them very uninspiring, don't really pique my interest at all. Uh, but earlier this year, I did see a watch from a brand called Traska, and they had this model called the Freediver with this really interesting mint dial that I would never suspect would actually look good, but I actually liked it. But today we're looking at their latest release, the Summiteer. It's an everyday field style watch with an impressive scratch resistant case. And before we proceed with this review, this is going to be another giveaway watch. I know I was a little bit behind last month on getting a giveaway announced, but I'm gonna be lumping together a few different watches here. So the ones that have already been announced, the Ocean Crawlers. Uh, so if you've not seen my review of that, link down below. Also be sure to be following me on Instagram and filling out that watch giveaway form. Trasco was nice enough to offer me this watch for free to give away uh, for our giveaway this month. So as of late, I've been talking a little bit more about the subject of everyday watches and I think under a thousand dollars, or it's hard to come by in terms of having a watch that could be appropriate for more dressy scenarios, as well as having it be more appropriate for maybe everyday wear, you know, banging around and not have to worry. And I think where this watch is trying to really pinpoint is that you know sub one thousand five hundred dollar market with everyday watches. So they're going to be competing with Hamiltons and the Seikos of the world. So very competitive landscape. Uh, but let's see how this thing stacks up. So on the wrist, the watch has a nice wearable presence, very similar to the models just mentioned, 38 millimeters in diameter, a lug width of 20 millimeters, a thickness of a slim 10 millimeters, and a lug to lug of 46 millimeters, while achieving 100 meters water resistance with extra security with a side screw down crown. The brush case is also paired with a brush finish bracelet to match the case that tapers from 20 millimeters at the lugs to 16 millimeters at the buckle. In short, it's solid, comfy with no hair pulling. The buckle features a two button release that is fairly secure, and has nice prelage machine finishing uh, on the underside for a nice little extra touch there. On the wrist in general, I think this watch wears very similar to a couple models that I reviewed uh, a little while back, a couple weeks ago with the uh, Zin 556s. If you've not seen my review of that, uh, great everyday watches for around $1,000. I will link to it in the description. But in addition to that, you're also gonna see these wear very similar to like the Hamilton khaki fields of the world uh, for that kind of everyday field style watch. And also in my time with this watch, I spent some time just putting out some different leather straps on it. Uh, really easy to do so with the drilled lugs as well uh, for swapping in and out with the bracelet. But one thing that I think this watch does well in comparison to other watches in this range is I think an area that a lot of just brands and just us as enthusiasts don't really consider very often, and that is the actual treatment of the case itself and how is it resisting scratching and just how durable actually is it. So the case and bracelet is made of 316L stainless steel, uh, basically a standard for the industry, but also features an applied coating that helps the watch resist scratching incredibly well. And as an example, I did a test showcasing an untreated link and then a treated link from their bracelets and went pretty hard at it and trying to scratch it. And I think that really speaks for itself in kind of showing how this works. For those of you that want a little bit more data behind this, they were able to take this 316L steel that measures approximately 200 HV on the Vickers hardness scale. And after applying the coating, we're able to achieve 1200 HV on that Vickers hardness scale. And with those numbers, that is right in line with Damasco and also with uh, some of Zinn's uh, more treated cases that they're offering up. And if any of you guys have ever seen, uh, you know, just the resistance of scratching that those cases can really maintain, uh, pretty impressive what they've been able to pull off here. And in addition, they have a pretty transparent overview of how they're able to do this, as well as how do they just build these entire watches, regulate them in general on their actual website. So I'll have a link down below if you want to check it out. Looking closer at the watch, the dial showcases a matte blue dial that has a raised outside portion falling in line with kind of the vintage sector dial designs. At the center, minimal writing in white printed lettering and the logo at the 12. Also, you have loom filled sword style hands at the center along the outskirts of the dial, a railway minute track and the classic 369 Explorer style display. It certainly hints at the Explorer, but definitely I think it's far away from an homage to the Explorer itself. Now this model here is a prototype technically, so I was told that there's gonna be added loom on the production models, specifically uh, with the Superluminova on the printed markings on the dial. And looking at the loom shot of this watch, I'd certainly say it's probably needed, uh, but certainly not the worst that I have seen by a far margin. Flipping the watch over, we have an open case back featuring a 9000 series caliber from Japanese movement manufacturer, which also falls under the Citizen umbrella, 
with the Miyota 9039 caliber. The movement is a notch up from their more basic calibers, so like the 8215s or the 821As, which is the decorated form of that movement. This one clocks in out of the box with an accuracy of minus 10 plus 30 seconds per day from Miyota which is right there with the Seiko counterparts that you'll often see. So the 6R15s, uh, the 4R35s as well. Uh, but after going through some regulation uh, through Traska, uh, they're clocking these in at minus five to plus 15 seconds a day. So in other words, pretty solid performance to get out of these Miyota movements. So this automatic movement operates at 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz and has a 42 hour power reserve. And in general, I hear good things about Miyota movements in terms of being able to work on them, uh, regulate them, and they do just always tick. I mean, they're pretty reliable movements. Uh, the downside of a lot of these is just the fact that they're never usually great in the looking department. So uh, when I see an open case back for especially a lot of these entry level models and thinking it's gonna be a selling point. I think sometimes for somebody that is looking at one of these watches, if owned a couple mechanical watches before looking at a movement like this, I don't think it's much of a deal breaker, especially if you're looking for 100 meters of water resistance. I think the extra security of having maybe a closed case back uh, if you're trying to get kind of optimal performance and feeling peace of mind, it's almost kind of better just to go for maybe a nice, uh, maybe engraved case back or something that looks, uh, you know, it's just more secure for a watch like this for just performance sake. But overall, I think despite these watches residing in a competitive price tier, I think are really well done everyday watches with nice looks, 100 meters of water resistance, very nice case treatment to help with scratch resistance, which again, I don't see very often, especially in this lower price tier, and has a no nonsense Japanese movement. I think with all that considered, I enjoyed my time with this piece and I think Traska as a micro brand is gonna be a brand that of course I've had an eye on, but I'm going to continue to keep an eye on uh, with these watches and seeing what else they come up with. So guys, if you like this video, you like the giveaways, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can stay up to date with new videos. That's all a big help uh, for us on YouTube here. Also, big question, I, I mentioned about like the coding of different cases and how I think us as watch enthusiasts, sometimes we don't necessarily cover that as being as maybe important as it is in terms of everyday wear. Are there other things that maybe are not thought about very frequently when we're thinking about purchasing a watch that for you, you found is probably something that's more of a deal breaker uh, in maybe your research or in owning a lot of different watches? Love to hear your comments down below. And guys, if you wanna partake in this giveaway again, link in the description, head over to my Instagram, be sure to be following me there. I'm gonna be announcing the giveaway winners on my Instagram, as well as uh, filling out that watch giveaway form. If you filled it out already, you're good to go. If you're looking for an amazing watch strap for your watch, head over to teddyballister.com, as well as maybe getting an iconic watch for yourself, head over in the link in the description to Bob's Watches. Using that link helps us out, allowing us to continue to do what we're doing here. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.